And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of... The Return from Death. You mean that you can bring him back to life? I know I can. There, everything's ready. Will you step back, David? Of course. How to turn on the machine. You'll see for yourself what I mean. How to induce the charge. How much voltage are you using? 25,000. That's enough. Now, look at him, David. Why, he's alive. He was dead, but now... Now he's alive. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present The Return from Death. And now for our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Return from Death. Dr. Jason Sinclair was a brilliant man. He was one of my instructors at medical school. He gave of his knowledge freely, creating in the students a desire to learn, imparting some of his own enthusiasm for his subject into the minds of his students. I always looked forward to his classes. After I received my degree, I lost track of him for several years. But one evening when I was ready to leave the research center... Hello? May I speak to David Cummings? Speaking. David, this is Jason Sinclair. Dr. Sinclair, it's good to hear from you. I was wondering if you'd remember me. Of course I would. All of us have studied under you owe you more than we can ever repay. What are you doing this evening? Well, actually nothing. I'd like to see you, David. Why don't you come over to the house tonight? It'll be a pleasure. Do you still live at the same place? Yes, the world may change, David, but Jason Sinclair and his habits don't. I'll be expecting you about eight. See you, David. Come in, come in. Good to see you, Dr. Sinclair. You can forget the doctor part of it, David. Call me Jason. You're not in school now. How long has it been? I've I've lost all track of time. You received your degree in 1943. It's been ten years. <laughs> I didn't realize it was so long. You haven't changed, you know, Jason. I'm only ten years older, that's all. Oh, do you remember my daughter, David? I believe she was that's in... That's right. Your... She was in my class. How are you, Elaine? Fine, David. It's good to see you again. Are you working with your father? Yes. Sit down, David. Sit down. Can I pour you a drink? Not right now, thanks. Are you still with the college, Jason? No, I left there some time ago. Oh, really? How come? I wanted to devote more time to research. I see. David, are you happy with your present position? Well, I hadn't stopped to think about it. I guess I am. That's a shame. Why do you say that? I was wondering if you'd like to work with me. I don't know. I hope you'll forgive me for hesitating, Jason, but I've... I've been with Associated Chemical for several years. I understand, David. It's only natural that you'd hesitate. Why, of course. Dad doesn't want to push you into this, David. You're perfectly free not to accept. Of course, I would like to have you with me. I can guarantee you more than you're getting now. Well, that's a pretty good inducement. I'd like to work with you, David. I'm sure you'll find it interesting. What are you working on, Jason? Come, I'll take you downstairs. And you can see for yourself. Do you remember some of our discussions years ago about death and the possibility of bringing back to life a man that medical science had pronounced dead? Yes, I do. Well, that's what I've been working on. Oh? Have you had any success? Quite a lot. More than I'd expected this early. I'll show you. The rabbit you see on the table is dead. I'd like to have you examine it, if you will. Yes, he's dead, I'd say, for, uh, for at least two hours. Very close, David. A few minutes longer, that's all. What do you intend doing? You see. 
I've already given him the preliminary injection, David, to save time. You know, of course, that all life has a connection with electricity. We think we send out small charges of electricity along the nerve network, which in turn activates our muscles. You mean that you can bring him back to life? I know I can. There, everything's ready. Will you step back, David? Of course. Now to turn on the machine. You'll see for yourself what I mean. Now to induce the charge. How much voltage are you using? 25,000. That's enough. Now look at him, David. What? He's alive. This animal's alive. Yes, David. But there's something strange about him. How do you mean? I don't know. I, I can't explain it. You're imagining it, David. You saw him dead, now you see him alive. The sight is foreign to your mind. Perhaps. I've learned the secret, David. Now we can restore to the living those who have passed into the realm of death. Although Jason Sinclair passed over my objection, I still couldn't get the thought from my mind. There was something strange about the animal. Something seemed to be missing. We went back upstairs. Jason left the room to get the papers he'd written explaining the various steps he'd taken in his experiments. I was left alone with Elaine. Did you see it? Yes. It's amazing. Are you going to work with him? I think so. David, I wish you wouldn't. Why not? Did you notice the rabbit after he returned it back to life? Yes. David, didn't it look foreign to you as if something were missing? I noticed something, but I, I couldn't put my finger on it. That's what I mean. David, I don't think you should do it. I don't see why. Elaine, think what a boon this will be to the world. Will it, David? Well, of course. I'm not too sure about that. Elaine, you of all people should have faith in your father. I don't, though, David. Why not? Because I don't believe that once an animal is dead, it should be returned to life. It should remain dead. Because when it dies, its spirit dies with it. And when Dad brings these creatures back, the animal lives, true enough. But, David, it's like an automaton. The body may live, but the thing which gave it personality is dead. I'm still going to work with him, Elaine. Do you know what you're getting into? Dad is a precisionist. He'll experiment and experiment until finally he'll want to try it on a man. And where is that man going to come from, David? Where is he going to come from? Back now to our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Return from Death. I was in the house of Jason Sinclair. A few minutes before, I'd been witness to a scene which... That amazed me. As I saw it, I made up my mind to work with Jason. We went back upstairs, and when Jason left the room, his daughter tried to dissuade me from my decision. I'm serious, David. Where is he going to come from? I don't know. Then you're going to go through with it? Yes. I warned you, David. Remember that. Here are the papers, David. Oh, thank you. Look them over. They contain all the notes I've made on the experiment. I will, Jason. Are you going to work with me? Yes. Good. You'll have to give the organization for which you're working now at least two weeks' notice. Of course. If you like, you can live here with us. Do you have any relatives, David? No. Glad to hear that. I'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks later, I moved in with Jason Sinclair and we began working. We conducted experiments making a few changes altering the content of the preparatory injection, resetting the amount of voltage required, progressing from the lower stages of animal life ever higher. And then one night, he told me what he intended doing next. David, have you heard of Terry Whalen? Whalen? He... Oh, yes. He's going to die next week for the murder of that old man. That's right. We're going down to the prison tomorrow to see him. Why, Dad? Whalen has no relatives, no one to bury him after his death except for the state. What do you mean? I believe we can have access to his body after he's executed. You mean you... 
intend using him as a subject? That's correct. But if we're successful, Jason, won't it, won't it be dangerous to return a killer back to life? Not if we watch him. Not if we can destroy his urge to kill. Dad, I don't think you should do it. He's a dangerous man. Nonsense, Elaine. We'll increase the amount of voltage, David. Enough to destroy that part of his brain which motivates his desire to kill. Perhaps he'll completely change. You someone else, Dad, not Terry Whalen. Where would I get someone else, Elaine? We arose early the following day and drove out to the prison. Jason was well known and thought highly of in official circles. We were allowed to talk to the warden and Jason convinced him that Whalen's body would be used for medical research, but he neglected to tell him how it would be used. Then we were allowed to talk to Whalen. Just a few minutes, Dr. Sinclair. I understand. Uh, who are you? My name is Jason Sinclair, Mr. Whalen. Uh, what do you want? To talk to you. So talk. You ought to be executed next week, Mr. Whalen. Look, if you come here just to tell me that, I got a surprise for you. I already know it. I'm a doctor, Terry. We'd like to use you as the subject of an experiment. Sure, sure. Go right ahead. Not now, Terry. After you've been executed. Ah, what do you mean? Where are you from? You from one of those medical colleges? Listen, I don't go for that stuff. No, sir. If that's what no, you're here Terry. for, I... I propose to bring you back to life. You mean... You mean after I'm dead? That's right. You're crazy. <laughs> you sound like you've been in stir too long. <laughs> I'm serious. We can do it. You mean... <laughs> you mean you can actually bring me back to life? That's right. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> ah, and they can't punish me a second time, can they? They can't kill me twice. <laughs> you agree to it then? Yeah, sure. Sure, Sawbones. Sure, I agree to it. Anything... Anything to get another chance. <laughs> Jason made arrangements for an ambulance to pick up Whalen's body a short time after the execution. That night, the night Whalen settled his debt with the state, a storm broke. We stayed at the house and waited. The ambulance was already at the prison, waiting for its passenger. What time is it? Almost 12. I wish you hadn't arranged all this, Dad. Nonsense, Elaine. Well, that is 12 o'clock. The time is to die. It's only taken three hours, even in this storm, to get back here, Jason. That's right. When they do, David, they'll have Whalen with them. We waited there at the house. The storm was the perfect background for the strange mood which had seized hold of each of us. A short time after three, the ambulance pulled into the driveway and we went down and opened the basement door. They brought him in and sat him on a table. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Are you ready, David? I guess so. I'll prepare the hypodermic then. We'll give him 20 cc's of this. No more than that? Of course not. There. That does it. Now, help me attach the wires. Dealing with the death has always frightened me. It's foolish, my boy. As a scientist, you should never allow yourself to be subjective about things. You must be completely objective. There. I believe that'll do it. Dr. Sinclair. Anything wrong, David? Maybe... Maybe we ought not go through with this. You can't turn back now? No, I suppose not. Shall we begin? Switch it on. It has a pleasant sound, hasn't it, David? What's the reading? 10,000. Increase the charge. The reading? 15,000. 20,000. 23,000. 24,000. 25,000. Shall we stop? No. You must destroy his desire to kill. 26,000. 27,000. That's it up. Turn it off. Now, to take a look at him. 
Place the contact microphone in his chest, Ed. Yes, Jason. Listen, David. You're listening to the sound of his heart, David. The beating heart of a dead man. We've succeeded. We've brought him back from death. Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Return from Death. It was a wet and storming night. Jason Sinclair hovered over the body on the table in the center of his basement laboratory. I stood just behind him, watching a dead man return to life. Listen, David. You're listening to the sound of his heart. We've brought him back from death. Remove the contact, Mike. Jason. Look at his eyes. They're open. Yes, I see. Waylon? Can you hear me? Answer me, Waylon. Uh, Think what uh, this means, David. uh, He can tell us what it was like to be dead. The first man ever to know the secret. Waylon, answer me. He, the strap's taken off. All right, let's loosen them. Now, how do you feel, Waylon? Look out, Jason. He's getting off the table. Nothing to be afraid of, David. He didn't limp before, did he? No. Some of the motor section of the brain must have been damaged. He's coming toward us. Don't move. You might frighten him. Look at his eyes, Jason. They're not human. Go ahead, David. He's trying to say something. I can't understand you, Waylon. What are you trying to say? He's patting you on the back. You're trying to thank me, no doubt. All right, that's enough, Waylon. I understand you appreciate... Take his hand away from my throat, David. That's enough, Waylon. Ah! Look out, David. I see him. Ah! You knocked him out. Yes. You shouldn't have done that. Are you serious, Jason? I was protecting myself and you for that matter. He wouldn't have hurt me. You didn't seem to think that when he had his fingers around your throat. Well, I admit that I was frightened. All right. What are we going to do with him? Well, keep him down here. Teach him to talk again. Seems to have lost the power of coherent speech. Look at him, Jason. Why? Is there anything wrong? I don't know. But looking at his face now, I have the strangest feeling that he's not really a human being anymore. That something's missing. That he's a mad, vicious creation of a devil. You're talking like a fool, David. Perhaps you're tired. I know I am. He can't get out of here. he will lock the doors and the windows are barred. Let's go upstairs. All right, Jason. But remember what I said. We placed him back on the table, taking the precaution of strapping him down in case he should awaken. Then Jason locked the doors and took the keys with him. We went upstairs. I've been waiting for you. Then I thought you were asleep. No, no, I couldn't sleep. You should have come downstairs and joined us then, Elaine. You brought him back? Yes. How did he react? Not as well as he might have, Elaine. Anything wrong? No, nothing. He tried to kill your father. What? He was merely trying to thank me, David. He's probably suffering from a sort of amnesia. He doesn't realize his own strength. He's like a baby. You know, that's not true, sir. He's an inhuman, vicious killer. Oh, you should never have done this, Dad. Would you both be quiet? I'm tired of listening to you. What? I don't like to admit it. But I know I've been wrong. I'm sorry, my dear. I lost my temper. I shouldn't have. I know it's because I think you're both partially right. How do you mean, Jason? There is something inhuman about that thing that was a man downstairs. I noticed it tonight when his hands were around my throat. In his eyes, that intangible something that makes an animal a man is missing. In its place, I see... The eyes of a madman with no soul. What are we going to do? I don't know. Maybe we haven't failed, sir. 
Maybe because we're tired, we think we have. It may look completely different to us after a few hours of sleep. I just... <gasps> what was that? Came from downstairs. Whelan. We had him strapped to the table. He must have gotten loose. <laughs> that was the door. He's trying to knock the door down. We have to stop him. But how? Elaine, oh. get my gun. All right, Dad. I'll be right back. I tried not to admit it, David, but that was only lying to myself. You and Elaine brought me to my senses. You were right, right all along, about the rabbit, about the other animals, and especially about Whelan. He must be destroyed. He's a monster without feeling. Here, Dad, here's the gun. Thanks. I'm going down there and... You don't have to go down there. That was the door. Listen. Listen, he's coming up the stairs. Turn the lights out, David. Yes, sir. I'm going out in the hall to meet him. No, Dad. No, let him come in here. We'll stay right over here on this side of the room. All right, Dave. Be quiet. He's coming. I don't want to shoot him. We'll have to take him alive. You'll have to shoot him. Oh, yes, Dad. He's just outside the door. David, I'm afraid. Be quiet. Ah, there he is. Where are you close? He's searching for me. Shh, be quiet. He's looking this way. <laughs> Use the gun, Jason. face now, David. Yes. I see it. It's composed. It looks human again. Perhaps we're not meant to tamper with the natural laws of life and death, David. I see that now. But it took Wayland's return from death to prove it to me. Tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental.